Hey, somehow this is just the third van I have reviewed on the channel, and somehow it's not a Chevrolet. 2023 Chrysler Pacifica Torn L, complete in all its rental car glory. Yeah, I'm really hitting on stuff that I haven't covered much on the channel. Last time it was a Volvo, which, yeah, first Volvo on the channel with the 2002 Volvo S40. And this week it's a rental spec 2023 Chrysler Pacifica Torn L. Eh, that's a bit of a mouthful. Yeah, honestly, this is also just the second minivan that I've done on the channel. The first being my dad's Chevy Astro before he got in on the road early in this channel's lifetime. But I'd really need to remake that video as he's since fixed the front end and has gotten it painted. However, the Astro isn't something you'd consider a traditional minivan. As unlike most minivans which use a front-wheel drive car construction, the Astro uses a truck-based ladder frame rear drive construction. No, we're covering the modern interpretation of Chrysler's long line of class-leading minivans. The Pacifica. The minivan can be attributed to Chrysler, even though variations of the idea can be traced back as far as the 1930s with Scout Scarab. Chrysler and the other two members of the Big Three developed compact-based vans in the 1960s, with Dodge's A100 being based on its small Dart. However, while successful, all three would grow their van offerings for the next generation with vans based over their full-size trucks. But in the early 1970s, both Ford and Chrysler began development on smaller, garageable vans that would be more efficient and fit inside your average garage. Designers at both Ford and Chrysler saw the potential with the success of the Volkswagen Microbus in the States and the untapped potential of a small van market. But the Chrysler project would never progress past a clay model, as Chrysler chairman Lynn Townsend said that if such a market for a vehicle existed, then Ford and GM would both be making one already. Ford, on the other hand, already had a working prototype of its carousel van in performance tests, but the 1973 oil crisis saw Ford put the brakes on the entire project and focus on their traditional market segments, since such a radical vehicle for the time was deemed too risky. But exactly Iacocca persisted, because he saw that the smaller van slash people mover would be something more efficient than the giant V8 powered wagons at the time, in the age of oil embargoes and government regulations on their big engines. Chrysler had already restarted its minivan project in 1977, and when Iacocca would be fired from Ford in 1978 and moved to Chrysler, he was elated that the vision that he was championing for at Ford was being worked on at Chrysler, and he pushed the project ahead as part of its upcoming small K platform, which would help Chrysler emerge from its 1979 government bailout and out of the malaise that had plagued the company throughout the 1970s. The upcoming minivans had four major design goals. The ability to park in a standard-sized garage, a car like NVH, a low and flat cargo floor, and the ability to remove the rear seats to load a 4x8 sheet of plywood. Launched in 1984 to massive customer and critic praise, the Dodge Caravan and Plymouth Voyager sent the car world scrambling. Both Ford and GM would rush out vans based off their compact trucks. But Chrysler's small vans would reign supreme, a much-needed win for the long-struggling third wheel of the American car market. Of course, with something so successful and class created, a second generation would be introduced for 1991. With it finally came a Chrysler variant, the Town and Country. Previously, that name was reserved for Chrysler's largest wagon available, but with Chrysler itself striking down the decades-long dominance of the wagon as the choice for families, the Town and Country name would transfer over to the minivan instead. The Chrysler Town and Country would follow suit with the other Chrysler minivans for multiple generations before finally bowing out in 2016 to make room for the Pacifica, which is what you see here today. The Chrysler Pacifica, well, at least this one, would be introduced in 2016 as a 2017 model. Unlike the Town & Country model before, it would finally stand on its own legs, 
as the Dodge Grand Caravan would continue on as mostly a fleet sales option until 2020 when it was finally axed. While the 5th Gen Caravan and its siblings, including a Volkswagen variant, sat on a Chrysler Pacific front-wheel drive platform and would feature a very mid-aughts Chrysler blocky design, the Pacifica sat on Fiat's compact, wide, long wheelbase platform, meaning it shares its architecture from everything like the Dodge Dart and its European Fiat cousins to the KL Jeep Cherokee I recently reviewed on this channel. And unlike the 5th Gen Caravan in Town & Country's Mega Bloks design, the Pacifica is a shockingly subtle and sleek design more reminiscent of the 4th Gen Rams. But it's modern and it doesn't fall into the angry everything that modern cars started falling into in the late 2010s. And I would argue that that's an issue with one of its biggest competitors, the over-designed 4th Generation Toyota Sienna. It's a pleasant surprise to the rest of the car market. And it's a shame that the only other vehicle that would get this elegant design language would be the Pacifica's short-lived, compact-wide, long-wheelbase platform 8, the mid-size 200 sedan. Under the hood, you get one engine, but it's not a bad one. Chrysler's proud 3.6-liter Pentastar V6 producing a respectable 305 horsepower and 269 foot-pounds of torque. You could get it in a standard gas version or upgrade to the Pacifica Hybrid, a plug-in hybrid version that could net you an electric-only range of 33 miles. Which honestly isn't a bad thing for trucking little Timmy and Tammy to and from school and sporting events. Behind the pennant star in gas models is the 9-speed ZF948TE transaxle that I went into depth a bit with the KL Cherokee video, while hybrid models get a CVT known as the eCVT. And starting with the 2021 refresh, all-wheel drive was made available for non-hybrid models. The fun thing about the all-wheel drive model is that unlike 4th and 5th gen Chrysler minivans, the Pacifica retains Chrysler's famous stone ghost seating which is a huge benefit that the Pacifica and earlier Chrysler vans had over its competition. When not stowed, the space where the seats would hide make for a fantastic little storage cubby that's well hidden and is a good spot to put items that you don't want getting damaged when you pack the Pacifica full of gear. Also, in the rear cargo area, this also creates deep pockets behind the third row that further expands its cargo capacity. In Delvin, further inside, the 2023 Chrysler Pacifica Torn L is comfortable, full of tech and storage possibilities, and is just the perfect road trip cruiser. The 2021 refresh introduced Uconnect 5, which comes standard with the large 10.1 inch touchscreen that features Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, Amazon Alexa, Sirius XM satellite radio, and high speed data connectivity. Need to plug your phone in? There's USB and USB C ports everywhere in here. What's even great about the rear ports is that they can also communicate with the Uconnect in the front, so passengers can play their own music on a road trip if they want. There are some basic HVAC controls on the dash stack, but much of the more detail-oriented selections, such as the dual zone and the rear controls, are in the touchscreen. Of course, both sliding doors are power, as is the hatch. In this Torn L model, you do get features such as adaptive cruise, lane keep assist, blind spot monitoring, and so much more than I have time to dive into. Everywhere I poked and prodded, I kept on finding little details, such as this little rear occupant monitoring mirror that flips open next to the sunglasses holder. In a modern minivan, they need to be sold with all the bells and whistles, all of the storage cubbies and device ports possible, because that's what a minivan needs to do in 2023 to compete with crossovers. On the road, the Pacifica is swift and pleasant. Minivans have been surprisingly quick for a long time, as automakers quickly found that V6s were the way to get these uncool mommobiles up to speed quickly. You haven't been able to get a 4-banger in a Chrysler minivan since the 4th generation. And for good reason, as minivans' larger size saw 4-cylinders being taxed more and more trying to move their increasingly bloated sizes. But like I said, the Pacifica is a swift beast that can get lost pulling away highway miles with ease. The Pacifica isn't overly large either, as we spent the weekend with it navigating St. Petersburg, Florida's busy streets without a fuss. Overall, I can't fault the Pacifica, as it's a comfy people mover that's quick on its feet. And while the Pacifica is a fantastic minivan, sadly the Chrysler brand as a whole has sadly been left to rot for much of the 2010s. Once it was a luxury brand capable of taking on Cadillac and Lincoln, but now it's just the Chrysler Pacifica minivan and its Agent 300 sedan that's ending production at the end of 2023. 
Chrysler's story of the 2010s have been that of a lack of clear direction. The 300 sold well, but like its Charger and Challenger siblings, it's pretty much been the same car on sale since 2005. Yeah, it's had modern powertrain and interior upgrades over the years, but without the Hellcat everything that catapulted the Charger and Challenger back into relevancy in the late 2010s, the 300 has been resorted to a they still sell that option of the bunch. The mid-sized 200 that the Pacifica was based off was decent, but it launched at the start of the sedan apocalypse and unfortunately lived a short three model years. The proposed PT Cruiser replacement, the 100, was teased multiple times and had gone from being a rebadged Lancia to a reworked Fiat Tipo. Both of those models were teased to dealers at multiple points in the early 2010s, but nothing. And then there's the fact that Chrysler failed to put out a crossover or an SUV to replace the much maligned Aspen. While Lincoln and Cadillac were increasingly filling market gaps and shifting over to almost SUV-only lineups towards the late 2010s and early 2023s, here was Chrysler with nothing in the ultra-competitive premium crossover segment. But the Pacifica soldiers on, proudly carrying the Chrysler nameplate, and it will continue to when Chrysler becomes a premium EV brand starting in 2025, or so they say. The next generation Pacifica will be an EV, as they've teased. What does that mean for fleet sales, which are massively important for Chrysler and its minivan? Who knows? But I'm sure that's a question that not even Chrysler knows yet. I really like the Chrysler Pacifica. While it was a little jarring at first seeing the town and country name getting retired, it was no longer a brand that was viable in this day and age. The Pacifica was a much needed jolt in the arm that the minivan segment needed, and it's led to Toyota going all out with aggressive styling with the new Sienna, and Kia dropping its long running Sedona name in favor of its global name, the Carnival, to go with the model's massive redesign that achieves what the Chevy Uplander failed to do 15 years earlier. The Pacifica is an elegant design and such a good minivan, and it really has one rootin' for Chrysler to figure out what the heck they are doing. Hell, it's so good, I failed to bring up the original Pacifica, the mid aughts crossover that featured a horrible reliability and was so unlikable that its replacement would essentially be the Dodge Journey and not a Chrysler product itself. The only issues with the current Pacifica minivan that I've heard have pertained to the hybrid model, which are mainly anecdotal accounts, and nothing I've really experienced myself, because, of course, I'm driving a rental car. But that's something I myself would probably do more research into before getting a hybrid. As it stands, the 2023 Chrysler Pacifica Torn L is a fantastic modern take on the minivan, and it's a shame that this is all we really currently have for Chrysler itself. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you once again for watching another episode of Wiki Drives. Huge shout out to my wife Tori for helping with the filming of this video, and my in-laws Joel and Gary for letting me take the rental van out one morning while we were in Florida on vacation. If you have a car or truck you'd like to see on the show and happen to be in the Charlotte or Mooresville, North Carolina area, email me your submission with your car at wikidrives at gmail.com. That's right, submit your car to wikidrives at gmail.com. That's wikidrives at gmail.com. Don't forget to give the video a like, drop a comment with some feedback. Any sort of feedback or interaction with this video really helps this small channel grow in the algorithm. Share it with all your Chrysler Pacifica friends. And finally, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell for more wiki drives like these. Thank you so much for watching and have a good day. Chrysler Plymouth dealers big year end clearance. What a great deal, right? Yeah! Peterson, check out that acclaim. Hurry in and get that $1,000 cash back. Hey, Bakers, look at Grand Voyager. Over $2,000 in savings. Your name's all over it. Hey, Lewis, you see that Sundance America? You could drive it out of here for only $139 a month. Hurry in and take advantage of year-end clearance deal. Rediscover all the great American values at your Chrysler Plymouth dealer. Yeah!